Uh, let's talk about the trust once again. Now that the media, mainstream media attention has reduced, there are some questions that still linger in the minds of our devotees. For instance, since the Mahasamadhi, what steps has the trust taken to re-engineer itself for uh, preserving, nurturing and expanding the legacy of Bhagwan Baba? See, Sri Satya Sai's central trust does not require re-engineering. It just but it had a soul trustee, yes, still the Mahasamadhi. Is, yeah, but you know, a year before uh, trustees were inducted by mm -hmm. Swami himself, the uh, Swami had been not merely a founder trustee, but he was a soul trustee for a long time. And a major decision maker, one would guess. Yeah, he was. I would say that uh, all decisions were made by founder trustee. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also a soul trustee. The idea that the Santisai Central Trust has to sort of do something after Swami's Mahasamadhi, if any, is on the basis of human beings who have been appointed as trustees to get together and come to, you know, take some decisions on the basis of their best judgments. When Swami was there, not that people gave up their uh, judgment part of it, but then they knew that uh, the supreme judgment was vested in him and therefore it was not necessary for people to take a position and then sort of see whether this will meet with the approval of others and then come to a consensus and then do these things. Anything that is to be done, if you have to do, you go to Swami and say, Swami, this is the thing that needs to be done. And uh, he asks you certain questions, you reply, and he gives a decision. You carry it out. Mm -hmm. Whether it's small or big, it makes no difference. But when people in the absence of Swami have to take a decision, then there's no one single person who takes a decision. So this is the first time people would have worked with Swami in various capacities, meeting there in his presence uh, and then get to know what uh, how Swami sort of gives instructions. But they are now put in a position where they have to look at these issues before them, whether it's a question of um, hospital administration or uh, giving assistance to the university or take some decisions regarding the activities in the ashram, whatever it is. There is a need for people to get together, discuss, and then arrive at a conclusion and then take steps to implement them. What is a typical trust meeting like? Do you all pray before you start? Yes, this is ingrained in all of us. Nothing here is begun without invoking the blessings of Swami. So, like it used to happen even when Swami was there in any official meeting which we used to conduct also started with uh, an Omkaram. So, this tradition is very much uh, is in, uh, in us and we carry it out. And you're nine of you. I remember the media was dubbing you as the nine planets, the nine ratnas, the nine gems. Now, are the nine gems united in their vision? Basically, I would say that there can be no difference in terms of perspectives because it is a Sai perspective ultimately. But in terms of, you know, emphasis, in terms of the nitty-gritty details, now each one perhaps brings to bear upon this issue, an issue, their experience, their judgment, their wisdom, uh, their own perception. And what normally emerges is uh, at the end of it, there is a consensus and say, yes, this could be done. We will do that. So I don't think we normally do not go by a majority-minority view mm -hmm. because that polarizes mm -hmm. issues. What we normally do is that when some differences in perspectives are there, then we'll sort of go through these things again and again, more by way of clarifying in one's own mind, you know, by listening to a lot of people, people around you, and then say that this seems to be 
the preferred way of doing things. And therefore, there is uh, a consensus that emerges not out of a, a formal mechanical way of building consensus, but a way of spontaneous understanding of each other's position. Mm -hmm. And uh, coming out of that understanding is uh, a way uh, or uh, uh, as an action program. So I at least have not seen any meetings in which the differences are insurmountable or that it has read, led to any violent clash of opinions. <laughs> I mean, these are things perhaps people Imagine. want to believe yeah. because I think they think that, well, uh, nine people getting together and working in a harmonious way on a day-to-day -day basis. It may not be nine all the time because... <clears throat> It's quite possible that some of the members, because of some reasons, ill health or could be distant, whatever the other or preoccupations, could be not may not be attending the meeting. But those who attend the meeting do really sort of do this work as a, some sort of a dedication to Swami's work. It is not personal work that you are carrying on in the trust or carrying out in the trust. If you talk of a hospital, what does it represent to us? It, it, it's not mere building. It's a magnificent structure, architecturally beautiful, and it has won the award, uh, national, international. These are things, all right. But then what is what does it signify? It signifies a life. It is a living institution. It will continue to be a living institution. Mm -hmm. Look at the way in which the doctors are performing, the nurses, the technicians, the administrative accounting staff, everyone. There's a great identification on the part with a yeah. mission. And a higher uh, purpose and, and drive. Always a feeling mm -hmm. that you are a part of a very wide, noble activity. And anything that is done there is directly, you know, as a way of doing something which will ultimately please Swami. Mm. And where does Swami's pleasing lie? It lies in the fact that everyone realizes his own responsibility and work together. Always it is a question of people having to work together that has given a lot of pleasure to Swami. If you see his people working together, uh, he always used to say, nothing gives me greater pleasure than that. Mm -hmm. So it is that overarching idea that people work together. That I think is... A very important aspect and of course we have university in which again you would have seen how students take upon themselves responsibilities whether it is scholastic or uh, sports or any program for that mm -hmm. matter mm -hmm. with uh, great seriousness very because true. nothing is trivialized in this place Things may be simple, complex, complicated, and because by virtue of the activities. But it is never trivial. It is never treated as something of inconsequence. Because in Swami's scheme of things, everything is important. There is nothing, Swami used to say, there is nothing like small or big. Everything is important. Yeah. Similarly, there is nothing like a, a, a big person or a small person. Uh, everyone is a person. I mean, equal in the eyes of God. I mean, I think I have seen myself when I was registrar in the university. The deference which Swami shows to a gardener is the same thing as the deference which he shows to the vice chancellor. In his scheme of things, I suppose a, a, a vice chancellor has its role to play and a gardener has its role to play. And in Swami's kingdom, everyone, you know, had a legitimate right to work uh, uh, for a cause. And I think that is a part of the culture of the place. It's a part of the culture of the organization. When you go to a hospital, you will find that there is a spontaneous getting together you know, of any activity which is there, suddenly people come. You can see in your own studio, nobody tells them, do this, do that. 
people find what is the need, what is the thing to be done, and suddenly you find, you know, a grouping of people. Mm. Uh, this spontaneity is a, a great factor in any organizational activity connected with Swami. Mm -hmm. So th this, I think, is a thing which marks even the deliberations of the Central Trust because nobody thinks that uh, we are doing something for ourselves or for any petty cause or for uh, anything that uh, serves one's purpose. I think it's basically, if you look at it, the main institutions that have been left behind by Swami are the major two hospitals and the university. Of course, there are some one or two schools which are like, taking care. The organizations there, you know, suffused with the same type of uh, spirit of service, etc. But as institutions which need to be looked after, protected, sustained, you know, these are the two great institutions that are there. And they do require a lot of support from the vast Sai fraternity. Mm -hmm. In fact, these institutions would not have come into existence, but for their, let us say, active understanding of the mission of Swami, for when Swami wanted to put up the hospitals, etc. Mm -hmm. It is their willingness to come forward and do something and participate in that great uh, task which Swami has undertaken that has resulted in these institutions being set up. But today are we poised to sustain them? Yeah, this is the point which I think as it is we are but it needs you know, the effort, the continued effort of all the devotees who have been responsible in the way to bring such institutions into existence. But these institutions require upgrading, expansion. Yes, you see, that is why it is important that the role of the institutions in future as to how it should continue to serve mm -hmm. the way in which it served is required. And in basic terms, in, let's say in economic terms, every successive year, is going to mean a little more expenditure given the cost, increase in the cost, given the escalation, given the inflation situation. Every institution will have to really go on providing for more. At the same time, it's not as though only the expenditure, the, the income of the people, the growth in the economy, the number of people. So there is something like uh, a desire on the part of many to participate in a very noble cause. And when it comes to a question of hospitals and university, I'm sure that uh, the devotees, whether in this country or in various parts of the world, would see in the, in the same manner in which they possibly uh, saw uh, when Swami was with us. So I do believe that over a period of time, the continued uh, sustenance and maintenance of the hospital as uh, providing first-class service free of cost would uh, really ring, you know, uh, bring in a great response from them. It's, it has a resonance of its own um, because it has been set up by Swami, it has been guided by Swami, it has been run by Swami and it has been provided for by Swami. Therefore, I think the connect between the last, the vast assemblage of devotees and these institutions will continue for a long time. It, it's not a merely a question of knowing Swami in person. It's a question of being able to identify with what all that he stood for. Mm -hmm. Now, coming generations might certainly would not have uh, would not be seeing Swami in the physical, in flesh and blood. But I think the legacy that is there would really be a part of the legacy of mankind as a whole. And in that sense, I think the devotees, let's say, of the next generation or a generation thereafter, would continue to look upon these institutions as providing them an opportunity to identify themselves with a very great, noble task. And if they're going to do something good in their own lives, this would certainly 
hold a very high position in their own scheme of things. Mm -hmm. In their priorities. That's reassuring to hear. But there's a question on people's minds. These are great projects and this is good news. But ever since the Mahasamadhi, has there been any drop in the contributions coming from devotees to support these projects? Yeah. You see, it is expected. I suppose any anything which is a huge it is not merely a transition. No, it's historic. It is, you know, it is something of a totally different nature. Now, it takes, I think, time for people. Now, let us see. People have uh, their own response mechanism. Some are able to come out of it quickly. Some take a longer time. Some feel that... Uh, if there is no presence of Swami, what is there in that place? Some feel that visiting a place itself is going to really give them a sense of being close with Swami. Now, human beings differ in their responses, in the reactions, and in their own, I mean, also in the time for recovery. So I think, given the fact that it is a huge difference between having Swami in his physical form and not having him, I think uh, is traumatic in many, for many people. It's not uh, easily, uh, you know, explained. Uh, I think those who have gone through as uh, devotees uh, would understand what I say. Because what affects me or has affected me must have equally affected everyone. And it's a, grieving is a process. Loss and is it lasts. That's why I said some people are able to get over that mm, faster, than, faster others. than others. Some people perhaps, you know, are thrown into a situation which they find extremely difficult mm -hmm. to get out of. But I'm sure uh, with uh, Swami giving them the necessary strength to get over, it's a question of time. Mm -hmm. So any fall in the people's contributions towards this, etc., Yes, I think is understandable. But I do think that when people see that these activities are carried on in the same spirit of service. With further growth and expansion yes. happening. See, you look at the way in which the hospital's work is going on for the last 18 months, let's say. There's no drop in any figure. All parameters, in fact, slightly have registered in increase look at the university i mean look at the faculty look at the students i mean there is in no way is the commitment to the cause of higher education now less than or in no way is the commitment to swami his ideals his mission is less i think Swami's mission is not defined by his presence alone. That is, yes, a very important thing. It has been, especially for us, in this generation which have been contemporary of the avatar. But I don't think we can circumscribe him, you know, to this period's limited period of time. It is true. See, if you look at the general span of time, the physical existence of any person, even the divine manifestation, is limited. It could be decades, but not centuries. But you look at the institutions that have been built by them, or by him especially, I do not think a second of this nature is there. Yeah, in the history but of humanity. In the general thing, if you look at the certain institutions which have been mm -hmm. growing over centuries, now, therefore, these, call, these hospitals, these universities, etc., will have a time span of centuries. So, if the divine manifestation limited itself to a few decades, the institutions which embody his spirit, you know, will last for centuries. And if it comes to a question of his message, it will be for eternity. So, you can't, it is timeless. Therefore, to think of these things in a time frame with which you're accustomed, mm -hmm. you know, is uh, not correct. Very myopic. Very myopic. So, I think it would give it. But I'm sure these institutions which are meant here will continue to inspire generations of people coming. And I think people would like to be a part of that great 
you know endeavor that history that that uh, tradition of service and i think that these institutions will be a rallying point for many many people to come and i think uh, we know uh, at least we believe that there will be a connection which swami will establish between himself and uh, the successive generations that come to inhabit this world mm-hmm. now um, a more mundane question what happens if a member of the central trust chooses to retire is there a mechanism within the trust to ensure perpetuity and induction of new blood see like it happens in trust the existing trustees will have to propose and which at, if it's approved by the people concerned then invitation is sent to the person concerned to join the trust board this is like any other trust or any corporate body mm-hmm. so when a situation arises when there is a need for somebody to be inducted a process of that nature would come into existence we should be in a position to think amongst ourselves who could be invited and uh, of course we also know sh- should know about his willingness to serve Th- these are normal things which happen everywhere and uh, depending on that uh, we'll have to take uh, you know a, a decision about formal induction and then extend it by invitation and then welcome him to the board of trustees i think these are processes which will it always be a him it see in the if you look at even the council of management which was there when bhagwan was a sole trustee rajmata was there mm-hmm. as a member of the council was a very uh, venerable person uh, very and then we had uh, the uh, justice kastagir of the Kastagir. calcutta high court yes. so it is not as though that uh, swami has uh, made any sort of uh, hard and fast rule that uh, men women, uh, men alone can be i don't think and even if you take uh, the governing body of the university have uh, been distinguished vice chancellor lady who come there so i think so far as uh, the organization i mean the, the trust is concerned i think uh, gender will not be a f- need not be a factor because if you go by history in uh, the way in which swami himself has inducted the council management members when he was a sole trustee would would be a pointer exactly that's excellent to know Now um, at the time of the Mahasamadhi we saw the whole world descend into the valley of Prashanthanilayam but a few months later there's appeared to be a drop in the size of the congregation did it worry the trust at any point in time you see it is not a matter for trust alone mm-hmm. it's as i said these take time for people to rebuild their lives you see when a thing of that nature happens like Mahasamadhi people consider it as the last sight of the physical frame you know that cannot be compared with the normal days in people come and go so that was i think a last homage uh, paid to uh, the physical people frame. who consider him as the physical expression of divinity mm-hmm. so that was a totally different thing that's why you would have seen for hours together people march past like for like yeah. for 3 days and these are people if you look at it they are i mean what one would call as people you know from rural areas mostly some of them from semi urban areas etc many of them might have come off and down but then that occasion must have brought them because mm. it's a question of being the last time to see therefore that itself shows that these are the people who are going to be the vast assemblage of devotees coming here need not perhaps be an expression of the devotion from their point of view that we can still carry bhagwan in our own hearts we can stay at home we can mm-hmm. pray so there are other ways of which expression of devotion can come but i think as years go by i think there will be a, a natural learning in the hearts of many to come and breathe the air that he breathed to tread the soil he trod 
and to hear the music. And it is not the conventional music, it will be the music of the spheres. Very true. Elevating and very inspiring. So I do not think the so-called, you know, fall in the number of people coming mm -hmm. uh, can be attributed to any factor except people having to come to terms, mm -hmm. you know, with such a loss. And we do not know, I mean, much about other places, but at least, you know, you take Shirdi, uh, people say, and uh, there are very, very few people who have been going there for decades mm -hmm. after Mahasamadhi. Mm -hmm. But in the last decade or more, uh, lots of people who visit the shrine. Now, you don't attribute it to any reason of a human, you know, b people making uh, the visit uh, as, a, as a religious tourism and things like that. That will be rather naive and I think it's not the right and way. But, it, but I'm, I think this can be attributed to the way in which the glory of that uh, manifestation mm. had uh, touched the hearts of people. So there is no reason to feel that a similar, you know, outpouring of feelings, etc., by way of having to come and be a part of this place, would also naturally manifest itself when Satisai wills and decides. Mm -hmm. Everything happens as per his game plan. It will happen. Very true. Sir, what would you say to the devotees, as you pointed out earlier in the conversation, some of them feel now that Bhagwan has assumed a cosmic form, he's present everywhere, not that he was not present everywhere before. I really don't need to go to Prashanti because I can experience him everywhere. I don't need to, just one darshan of Mahasamadhi is enough for me. Very difficult to know the reactions of a vast variety of people. We can only think in terms of major uh, places of worship. The one thing that comes to mind, you know, is the Shirdi, the other is the Tirupati. Now, where people, you know, over a period of time have felt, possibly in their own hearts and minds, something very comforting, very soothing, something which has really made them connect mm. with some power which they can't describe, but they can experience within. And I think during the lifetime of Swami, he has done that touching the hearts of many. So when will that express itself once again in the lives of these people? That is one. So in the lives of people who have not seen him at all, how would it express itself when it would express itself? Or matters in which I think we may not be able to comment upon. I think... It, this, this has to be left, this is in the bosom of time. Mm -hmm. But I think time will reveal at yes, some time. at the right time. Yeah. As it did with everything that unfolded throughout Bhagavan's mm -hmm. life. You spoke of uh, touching the hearts. So let's just change gears here. Obviously, Bhagavan touched your heart and, uh, your, and the heart of your family long time ago in 1975. And you decided to quit a very secure professional life when you were in the top of your game. And you could have gone places, obviously, had you stayed in the profession that you had worked so hard to get into. But you made that life-altering detour and you came to serve a master. And you actually, very hard for people to believe, lived in a 10 by 12 room for like 31 years of your life, a very modest life. At any point in time, did you wonder, did I do the right thing? 